Hi, I'm Olivia, known as The Witch of Wonderlust here on YouTube and on Instagram. Today is kind of like a follow-up, I guess, to my first original witchy video that I posted here on YouTube a little over a year ago. That was beginning your path into the craft, and honestly, I kind of want to remake that video, really for just my sake, because it's so cringy to watch. And that and also just the audio and the recording and... But, you know, I started somewhere and I was pretty proud of that video when I posted it and I'm still pretty happy that I did. So this is the follow-up, I guess, because I get this question a lot. I figured I would just make a video for it, so hopefully this will help you out. Uh, and that question is, what advice would you give to a beginner? This is a loaded question. There's a lot of advice that I would give to a beginner or to myself as a beginner. I still feel like a beginner, so that being said, Take everything I say here with a grain of salt. Make sure to cross-reference everything that I say because I, I'm definitely not an expert. I am not an expert or a professional practitioner. My videos are really just me talking about my experiences and kind of documenting the things that are working for me so far and hopefully helping you out. And plenty of you have helped me out with a lot of the things that you know, I've had issues with and troubles with in my craft. So that's the whole point of this channel. It is not me trying to be like, I know everything because that is so far from the truth. Now that's covered. These are 13 pieces of advice that I would give to a beginner. Again, these are going off of my own personal experiences and my own personal opinions and perspectives. The first thing is read. Read everything, learn about everything. And I know that this is overwhelming because there's so much information, which is also a little exciting. Pick one topic, take it baby steps, take it at your own pace, but read everything. I would argue that 70% of the craft is gaining knowledge and taking notes, and that other 30% is actually doing. Without knowledge, there's not you're not really gonna get very far, you know? So without actually understanding and knowing what you're doing, there's a lot of holes that are going to be in what you do. That all comes with time, so just like take that one step at a time. I would also argue that you should be reading and learning about things that contradict your current morals and beliefs. I know that that's really scary and there's definitely points in people's lives that uh, maybe you shouldn't do that just because you need to kind of figure out where you're at. If you are only learning about side A and there's this whole side B, then yes, maybe you may not believe or agree with side B, but you should be learning about side B because you might not know. You might not understand why this side is the way it is or why the views or the beliefs or the system is the way it is. And the more you learn about it, maybe you'll come to understand it. I'm not saying you need to learn to believe it or learn to agree with it, but you need to at least have a solid standpoint on why you disagree with it. And those pieces of those standpoints on why you disagree with side B should not only be coming from sources from side A. That was a lot. Did that make sense? Or did I just, I don't know, rewatch it. I think if it didn't make sense, maybe rewatch it. But I think, I think I did pretty good. <laughs> Moving on. Piece of advice number two is keeping up with this lifestyle is not for everybody. Dabbling in it isn't awful. Some may disagree, but I feel like people who are interested or at least open to learning and understanding things that may have at once or still scare them is a really brave thing to do. So don't feel bad that maybe later on down the line, maybe this doesn't fit you. Keeping up with certain lifestyles because I know some people who cleanse and banish every single day. Every day. That's a lot. I do mine like fully once a month. Some people do it every week. It's going to totally depend on what you believe and when you feel you need to cleanse. I mean, maybe you're doing all kinds of baneful work and you need to cleanse every day. You know, like, I don't know. Keeping up with those certain lifestyles, uh, don't put expectations, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. Don't put huge expectations on what you should and shouldn't be as a practitioner. Number three is ask yourself, what do you want out of this? What are you doing it for? Are you doing it for pursuit of knowledge? Are you doing it because you've always been called to it? What specifically is calling you towards it? Are you doing it to connect closer to your family or your ancestors? Are you trying to figure out what you believe and how the universe works? This can change as your craft goes on, but I think it's really important to understand why you're doing it. How do I know what's a real spell or a real ritual or not? How do I know what works and what doesn't? There's a lot of information out there, and how do I know what's real and what's not? Here's the deal. At the end of the day, what works, works, and what doesn't, doesn't. 
you are going to practice and figure it out as you go because I did plenty of spells when I first started that I was like, oh, I found this on the internet, so it's gotta work, right? And let me tell you, it either didn't work or it did not help my situation. So that comes with practice. You're gonna stumble, you're gonna have failures and mistakes, and that comes with literally any skill that you learn. So don't feel bad, and you'll eventually kind of get a feel of what is just something that somebody pooped out on the internet after 20 minutes of research, or somebody who's actually a practitioner who has real results from a certain spell. That is another reason, tidbit, why I don't really post a lot of spell work videos on here, because I like to post spell work videos that I know work and that I have done multiple times that have worked for me and other people. I don't want to just kind of like poop out a spell for you. Ew. Just like crank out a spell here and yeah, I hope that works. I mean, that's got correspondences and stuff, right? We'll get into the whole philosophy of spell work and all that jazz in an over tea video soon, hopefully, because that's, that's a whole ordeal that I get, I get excited about, okay? You'll eventually get a knack on what are the faulty ones and what are the things that are actually going to work for you. And at the end of the day, simplicity is key. Come to find the different authors and practitioners that you will feel that you trust a lot more and you'll get to know others that you'll find to be just a little bit more fluff. Number five, intention is so important, but it's not everything. I said something a little different in my very first video, and that's because things have changed. By the time I posted my video last year in October, had only been really out and open about my practice for about a year at that time, about a, about a year or two. Being open about my practice allowed me to open myself and have opportunities to learn and grow and uh, be taught by other practitioners because I didn't have to hide from anybody, which was really nice. And I know that a lot of you don't have that opportunity right now, um, which I hope you can eventually because it's, it's freeing and you deserve that. My beliefs have changed and that is going to happen, especially with the more you learn as a baby witch or as a beginner practitioner, or whatever term you wanna use, you are going to start with one belief or maybe you just are just like in one area and as you learn things are going to connect and this world is just going to get bigger but you are going to have a deeper understanding of how things work at least in your own perspective this is one of the things that has changed in one of my very first videos i said intention is everything and intention is so important and without having an intention with your spell or your rituals you're not really going to get very far you can cast spells with nothing but intention that's what prayer is however that's a really hard way to go about manifesting that is a lot of energy coming from only you honestly it's just not the most effective or powerful way to go about it some may disagree with me on that and that's totally fine but from casting and practicing a lot more heavily and a lot more just in general and learning from other practitioners from multiple teachers this is what i have come to find in my own personal experience is that with intention yes you can do anything but it is going to be a hell of a lot easier with tools and with ingredients. The reason tools and ingredients are used is not only to focus that intention and to laser in on what your intention is, but it's also because all of those pieces, everything that is around you, everything on this gorgeous, beautiful, dangerous earth can be used for magic. It's because everything holds a certain energy and a certain essence. There are reasons that there are certain ingredients in certain spells because they have a certain essence to it. And that is not only going to empower your spell, but believe me, it's going to be so much easier on your own energy doing that. That leads me into number six. Do not be your only battery. You should not be the only battery fueling your spells. Let me ask you a question. After any spell or ritual, are you completely exhausted? Like, are you tired? Do you just feel physically or mentally or spiritually or all of the above drained? If you do, it's because you're drawing from only or mainly yourself. Learn to use the energies around you of either the, the spirits or the plants or the earth or the sun or the moon. Learn to use those energies in order to empower your spells and don't just use yourself. Humans are very good for directing energy and sending things in a specific direction. Start small with smaller manifestations and smaller spells, but that's a big reason on why a lot of practitioners call upon spirits or deities or ancestors is because using nothing but yourself as the powerhouse is a really exhausting way to go about it. 
Number seven, everything matters, but not everything is necessary. If you saw my book review on Jason Miller's book, The Elements of Spellcasting, this will sound familiar. He put it in such a simple way. Like I've been trying to figure out how to <laughs> explain this to people. And the way he put it was just so, uh, so good. There is a reason that we use everything in spells. So he put it in a way because I asked him to go more in depth about it. Say you're trying to make pancakes or something and you are out of eggs. You are able to use a substance to replace that, such as mushed up bananas. Some people use olive oil. Is it the same thing? No. Are you still gonna get pancakes? Yeah. Is it gonna be a little different than using eggs for your pancakes? Yeah, but you still have pancakes. Does that make sense? Now, however, if you are missing flour and you decide to switch out flour for cayenne pepper, you're probably not making pancakes anymore. <laughs> it's the same thing with spell work, is there are so many different herbs that are used for protection. However, each herb has a different essence of protection. So some of them are a very gentle protection, whereas some are like this fiery wall of protection of like, back the fuck up. You know, there's reasons why we use specific ingredients. However, if you don't have a certain ingredient, you can use and substitute an ingredient that is similar. Okay, number eight is get crafty. I have said this in multiple videos, but it's because it's true. You already have everything you need around you to start practicing. You don't need all the fancy doodads and whatnot. And yes, while I suggest to invest in something that is, if somebody can make oils, better than you can, which I can make oils, but I have plenty of people who I buy oils from because they make oils much better than I do. And that is just a specific skill that I have not yet either acquired or never will. And I leave it to the people who are good at it, at good at their craft to go get that. However, when in a pinch, there's nothing wrong with using the things that you have around you. That's kind of what witchcraft is. <laughs> you already have everything that you need to start your craft. It's just a matter of changing your perspective. I have a video already on low budget witchcraft items that you can either make or that you probably already have. So check that out if you haven't already. Number nine is become a master in your fundamentals. In your foundations, these are going to be your foundation. Cleanse, protect, banish, or attract. They will always be relevant. If you're going to get good at casting anything, get good at these. Number 10, you will always be wrong to somebody. There are so many beliefs and ideals of what a spiritual practice is and isn't. Do not fall into being dogmatic. Your spiritual practice is about you and nobody else. Be open to receiving different ideas, different beliefs, different perspectives, but attacking somebody else for theirs Somebody somewhere will always have a problem with what you believe and how you practice. That's just how it's gonna be. Don't succumb to the them versus us idea. I see this all the time, especially with, you know, witches and Christians. It's them versus us. That's dangerous thinking. We're all humans and we're all just trying to figure it out. Number 11, what your craft looks like right now will not be what it looks like a year from now or two years from now or 10 years from now. You're gonna learn a lot. You're gonna grow a lot. Your needs and your beliefs are going to change. Number 12, divination, always. Any kind of divination works, but divination before any kind of spell is always a good idea. Even things that seem like such an innocent spell do divination. Just a quick three card spread take you a long way. And the reason I say this is because your higher self, spirits, the universe, deities, whatever you believe, they or it can see a lot more than we can. It's good to get a green light because in my own experience, casting that one protection spell actually kind of backfired. And that was only when I didn't listen to my cards. From personal experience, it saves you a lot of messes to clean up. Number 13, write everything down. Spells, information, ideas, thoughts, feelings, dreams, manifestations, readings, questions, literally everything. There's a reason grandma's grimoire is so massive. And last but not least, this is my favorite one by far, is don't take yourself so seriously. At the end of the day, we are all still human. We may have one foot into the spiritual realm, but we have that other foot in this realm. We are alive and well and living in this physical human realm. So you are human and don't forget it. Live your life as a human. Enjoy your life as a human. Don't take this all so seriously because even spirits have a sense of humor. What are you gonna do when you're doing a ritual and you're all serious and whatnot and you fart? Hmm? That part of the magic? 
Look, things happen. We're human. We mess up. We stumble with our words. We fart. If you can't take enjoyment and take a little bit of humor with that, I hope that you can learn to because having humor, especially in this modern age with memes, like the really good memes, <laughs> It's a gift. So that is my tips and advice for beginner practitioners. Um, if you have any tips or advice for beginner practitioners, I would love to know. Personally, I still feel like I'm a beginner practitioner. I guess this is more of just like, if you were just starting, this is the kind of advice that I would give. But if you have been practicing, because I know a lot of Wonderless Coven members have been practicing way longer than I have. So if you have any advice for those of us who are just now starting, or something that maybe you learned the hard way, I would love to know what uh, what that is. Leave that in the comment below and let me know. Um, if you would like to join the Wonderlust Coven, if you have not already, then go ahead and hit subscribe. And you can also join us and interact with the community on Instagram using the hashtag Wonderlust Coven. We are doing a monthly challenge. So for January, 2020, we are doing an intentional movement challenge, just intentionally moving, going to the gym, dancing to a song in your room, going for a walk and being intentional and being present and mindful of how that makes your body feel, stretching, yoga, going out for a walk with your dog or your kids or your cat. Intentional movement. I hope that this comes out in a very creative and or spiritual way for you. But if you want to share that as well, that is the hashtag coven challenge. There's already a few posts and they're pretty awesome. And yeah, but that is all for today. If you have any other questions, leave them in the comments below. Uh, if I can't get to them, I know that the Wonderlust Coven all have some really great advice for each other and we all help each other out. So that's pretty great. And yeah, other than that, I will see you in the next video. Best of luck, be kind to each other, and may your gods treat you as you've treated others. Bye.